Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Kelvin. And we are both passionate travelers. And we have decided to do a once in a lifetime around the world trip. We're starting in Mexico City and making our way all the way down to Brazil in South America. From Brazil, we're going to fly over to Africa. In Africa, we do a three week safari which finishes in Victoria Falls. Then we're going to travel around the Middle East and then we're going to head to Asia and spend the last few months traveling around there. Why don't you follow us on our once in a lifetime round the world trip and see the many great things that we will be experiencing. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Medellin, Colombia. As you will have seen on the last video, I was by myself traveling and exploring the Xida on foot, on a bike, on the local buses and on the trains, trams and cable cars. The reason I was by myself is because Anna, my wife, has had her passport stolen and she is sat in Guatemala waiting for her new one to arrive. Now, I'm approaching the end of my time here, it is my last weekend, so in today's video I'm going to be doing a lot more so-called tourist things. I'm going to be visiting the most dangerous favela in the whole of Colombia, I'm going to be going to a Colombian football game, and I'm also going to be doing the Pablo Escobar tour on my last day, learning a lot more about the bloody history that this tyrant has caused for this great sitter. So, with that in mind, I was preparing for the weekend. It was my last Thursday here. I was getting ready to watch the Man United game when all of a sudden I realised by the minute silence that Queen Elizabeth II had died. Okay, now with this poignant feeling hanging over us, we actually lost the game on a very dodgy penalty decision. But... The next day, the Friday, which would have been my last night, I got talked in by a few people in the hostel to have one last Friday night out on the town in Medellin. A Friday night in Medellin. Absolute fucking madness, man. People, noise, you name it. As far as the eye can see, it's just fucking bars, tents, uh, Prostitutes, yeah, Jesus Christ. What a fucking mayhem. A den of iniquity, man, I'm telling you. I was very impressed by this march by the locals and it's a stance protesting against child, sexual child abuse, potentially child prostitution. I was very impressed with them taking a stand against this. Saturday morning mass, 7 o'clock in the morning, locals are going to mass and even though I'm not religious, I do think it's quite a cool little cute thing really, you know, so yeah, no, it's cool to see, I'm off down the gym to do my early morning work. Last night when we was walking in the dark, I seen a, another outdoor gym that I seen, it was like an old prison gym, problem was it was dark, it was busy. So I'm trying to find it this morning so I can do my early morning workout. But as I'm looking for it, I found another park that I didn't even know existed over the road from the big main one that we was at. It's got a nice little kind of, all right, it's a little bit dried out, but a nice little river running through it. And we're walking here, a little jungly area here, over a nice bridge. There's coffee shops and restaurants sort of intermingled with a little bit of a jungly park area and walking over so yeah a lovely little cool quaint place a few little nice waterfalls running through i'll just show you those now and yeah nah, it, it's just i mean every day it's like a labyrinth you're just discovering something new every day and seriously, you could spend a... I could honestly live here for... I, I could work here for about three months and really get to know the city. I honestly don't think I would be bored, but... Nah, it's a great place, as I keep saying. And, you know, many places, it's great, but after a week, you're totally done with it. Whereas here... Oh, well, here's one little outdoor gym, but it's not quite the one that I seen last night. So I'm actually going to continue searching and see if I can find the other one. But yeah, many places, you watch them. Uh, 
you love them, but after a week, you're totally done with it. I mean, I've been here something like nine, almost ten days now, and it's just getting better. I wish I was here even longer, to be honest. So, yeah, it is what it is, and uh, I hopefully will come back again in the future with Anna. I can really, really show her the place. I mean, once you've got the, your ba vague bearings around here, you can pretty much cut to the chase and just get straight to it. Of course, I'll discover new things next time. That goes without saying, but, like, I'll, I'll at least have a ground foundation so I won't waste the first few days just finding my feet like I did this time. So, yeah, so as I walk up through this jungle area, it's getting louder and louder with the running water. I'll sign off, hopefully find uh, my little gym where I want to train, have a good workout, back for breakfast, and get ready for my tour this morning, which is to uh, District 13, which apparently was the roughest neighbourhood in, um, in Medellin under the bad times of the 80s and 90s. And then uh, apparently now they've really cleaned their act up. It's, you know, street art, street performances and all that. And it's supposed to be one of the coolest areas there is to be in. So looking forward to it. I'll check in again later and let you know how it goes. And we eventually found the little gym. A few boys here doing an early morning. I think I'm going to join them. This tour has been highly recommended of several different people. I'm really excited. It's three, but you're obliged to leave a tip. It's up to you at your own discretion, but generally it's agreed between 10 and $20 is sufficient. Looking forward to it, and if it's as good as everyone says, I think that'll be a fair price. This is where I'm going a little bit later, the stadium. The station is a stadium. Later on, I'll be there. NCAP guys disappear, gone forever. Why? Because the CAP, this is the armed command of people, was actually guys the police of the Comuna that was created by the FARC. FARC created the CAP in the 1980s in the Comuna 3. Yelling guys went to Comuna 8 and Comuna number 9, right? And there you see guys, they stayed in the Comuna. Okay? When this happened guys, you're gonna find the control of the AUC guys increased that much. That is the reason why. By 2010 and 2011, they had control, or they have actually still control, guys, of the cartels and of the gangsters, sorry, guys, in Medellin City. Do you remember the message? They mentioned, guys, the Oficina, they're also known as the paramilitary groups. I remember that. So it's the same thing, okay? Community 13, yeah? This is, or oh, definitely was, 
the most dangerous place in the world probably less than 20 years ago at some point. Now our guide has been absolutely sound like, really, really good. Anyway, he's left us here, we're on a little toilet break here, but as you can see, there's all that, there's things, everything's good. It's just such a vibrant place. Feel totally safe. People are coming up to you, trying to speak a bit of English, just giving you tips and, nah, honestly. It's so sort of friendly and overwhelming that like, it's verging on getting emotional like, it's actually, uh, nah, 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 I can't even think of the right words to describe it really, it's just, I just absolutely love it. to the top of the escalator and this is the view Esteban finished off with a quick round up and overview and then unfortunately I had to head off Goodbye Communa 13 What a great experience being here I have to say It is absolutely perfect being here I wish I could stay for a few more hours and really explore. Well, I'd like to say, unfortunately, I have to leave, but the reason I'm leaving is because I'm booked to go and see the football game today in Medellin. So even better, yep. Great day, has to end, and then we go from there. All right, see you next time. From the local bus back to the Metro, where I'll hopefully get back to my hotel in time. to make it for the football game. So we got picked up from our hostel, taken to a local pub just near the ground and after an hour or so meeting up with other tourists, many of them buying shirts of the local team, but I think there was only Andreas and I that actually stuck by our local teams. Him wearing his and I definitely wore mine. So we're outside the ground, security is 50-50 really. They didn't like frisk me too much, just a token gesture. But all the tourists are here, and we're getting ready to go in the stadium. So fingers crossed, yeah, it should be a good do, like. Thirty 
thumbs and mark pass there. Probably on a big game, just big enough for Man City to actually fill it. Okay, so I have been to many Mena, very big games. Manchester derbies against Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, all the big teams, European Cup Finals, FA Cup Finals, etc. Now, I have to be honest, this didn't quite compare to them, but it was a great carnival atmosphere. If you're ever in Medellin, I definitely recommend you do this. So after a great night at the football, the next morning has arrived. As I'm walking to get the bus to do the Pablo Escobar tour, I seen this guy juggling machetes like we've seen in Guatemala and it's just quite befitting to go to learn about a murdering tyrant and you see a guy juggling machetes along the way. We are approaching the grave of Pablo Escobar and his family and as you'll see still many people come and revere him putting flowers on the grave and paying their respects. Absolutely unbelievable when you think of the tyranny that he caused and with all the killing, murder, mayhem and you'll find out even worse things later in the, in the video which caused tragedy to almost everybody in this city. It's about 35, 40 meters this way, and all these names, as you can see, 
what's considered to be important names, i.e. politicians, journalists, and sort of like stepping stones through the years, all the way starting in the early 80s through to the 90s. And I'll show you on the other side, there's a load of holes in this uh, monument. So I'm gonna walk around to the other side and show you the holes. So on this side, as you can see, it's quite a big, a big kind of monument and it's saturated with holes. And these go all the way down. And each hole is to represent the people who got killed or the innocent people. Here, they've got 30,000 holes in this to represent 30,000 people. But the estimate in terms of everybody, in terms of police, journalists, innocent people, army and drug dealers, etc. The estimation is between 80 and 100,000. So it really was a full on virgin on civil war, really. Little mini monuments there. Uh, each one's dedicated to a certain person, a very influential political person that was killed along the way. But it is very informative uh, in the documentaries and the, the Netflix things. They made a few mistakes which he informed us about. So, our guide has just informed us that El Poblado, which is where I'm staying, as you should know from the previous video, which is now a really cool, hip place to stay, was actually the hub of all the drug dealing and the mayhem that goes with it. The monument you just seen was placed there in El Poblado to pay respects to the innocent people that got killed in that area. Now we're on our way up high up into the hilltops to see the so-called prison that Escobar had built for himself and his cronies when he knew he was actually going to be arrested. Big rooms, right? With big beds and everything. In any place that of course spent more than one month, any place he was going to have money there. Here you can see money. He also got luxury things like TVs and electronic devices to listen to music kitchen, living rooms, amazing places, even offices. In this case, with the booking account and the money that he used to control. Also, he got other luxury things like Picasso's, right? Here, you cannot see it, but not only here, in the first stop too, and many other locations in Colombia. I have seen countless movies, book, read books, seen things on Netflix, documentaries, etc. on Pablo Escobar. But when I came on this tour, i just seen a much bigger picture uh, explaining more thoroughly the mayhem that this, whatever you want to call him, tyrant caused through this place. Now, I do hate the way the movies and their media have portrayed him as some kind of Robin Hood character. And the most astonishing thing that I was so ast astounded by that I heard that our guide told us was he had a thing for sex parties with a 13-year-old girl. 13-year-old uh, girls. I mean, he was a paedophile. So surely that should be his legacy, a murdering psychopathic paedophile, not some kind of Robin Hood character. There was uh, fences and electric shock. Everything fake. Here you can see a picture of the plane. So from reception, I'm up a few steps, checking into my private room, number two. And this is what it is. So, basically one room, but when you've been staying in dorms with noisy women, snoring and having sex, <laughs> and you don't get, so obviously you don't get much sleep, then it's, uh, it's kind of a bit of luxury this, to be honest. You even got your own private little towels, a few things, like you do in a normal hotel room. Oh, and when you've not had it for a long time, it feels like luxury. I've even got a little fridge so I can put my own stuff in there. Oh, absolute luxury. Okay, I'm going to enjoy tonight. I know I will. Okay, I'm getting ready to say goodbye to my hostel. The pool's here. It's a little bit rainy, but 
it's still a great hostel this and uh, yeah that area there people are hanging out sheltering from the rain having a bite to eat my friend Andreas is here from Gothenburg and I'll uh, yeah I'll just uh, go and say hello to the staff that's um, that's Carlos working behind the bar I'll show you the few he's just one of the many many nice staff that are there now nah, but this has been basically a home from home uh, it's so much more than a hostel you feel like you're you're having a bit of a family staying with a family actually it is just so nice but i'll give you the tour and uh see how you go like yeah okay mm. so it's raining a bit but yeah typical really i mean i'm getting ready to leave so it don't matter so much for me but uh i'll walk through show you the reception it's a girl called Chris that's working on the reception. i show you. So Chris is there, she's busy, so I won't interrupt her. But the reception area here. Mm, okay. And uh, this is the downstairs chill out area. You come down here. What they do, they put, uh, it's, it's got very good Wi Fi down here. So you can come down, do any work you need to do online. Uh, yoga mats if you want to do a bit of exercise, bean bags if you just want to chill out. And what they've been doing for me is uh, kicking the TV up so I can watch uh, the Man United games. So it's definitely a home from home for me. Yeah, I couldn't be any happier actually. There's even a kitchen to do your cooking. And for a hostel, it is just so good, I've got to say. Okay, perfect hostel, best I've ever had. Hello everyone, I come with very good news, I am outside the Swedish Embassy again, I'll turn around and show you soon, and I have just found out today that my passport has arrived, woohoo, I am a free woman again, <laughs> oh, it's been almost exactly three weeks since uh, since I came here and uh, did my application. It was uh, Thursday the 25th of August. Today is Monday the 12th of September. So three days, uh, well, there's three more days than it would have been exactly three weeks. But anyway, I'll show you where I am now then. Here I am again, outside the big embassy, very tall building, flags are up. When I walked by here just a few days ago, all the flags were on half pole, which uh, was to, you know, uh, pay their respects for Queen Elizabeth II, who just passed a few days ago. But today they're all up on, on high pole again. So yes, I am going to go in and get my new passport. And on uh, this Wednesday, the 14th of September, I am flying to Lima in Peru to meet up with Kelvin again. Oh my god, I can't wait! Our next video will be coming from Peru and Anna and I will finally be reunited after almost a month of being separated. Don't miss that, it's coming soon.